Welcome to I am the expert on my child, how to support my child's growth and development. We welcome you to share this training with others. We ask that you use the below citation. This training was developed by the University of Delaware Center for Disability Studies in collaboration with the Delaware Department of Education Office of Early Learning. This work was supported in part by a subaward from the Association of University Centers on Disabilities and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention Cooperative Agreement. Today, we are going to be talking about you as the expert in knowing your child and our goal of supporting you as you support your child's growth and development. We will primarily be talking about the topic of developmental monitoring as a key activity to engage in to support your child's growth and development. First, we will discuss what developmental monitoring is. We will then discuss its overall importance and relevance. Next, we will discuss your role as parents in developmental monitoring and how exactly to engage in it followed by next steps, what to do once we have engaged in monitoring your child's development. We will conclude by sharing important resources. First, we will introduce developmental monitoring. We share that the main topic for today is developmental monitoring. We want to start by asking, what is developmental monitoring? Developmental monitoring is when you or another caregiver watch how your child talks, learns, plays, and moves to make sure they are meeting developmental milestones. So it is really a way for you, as the expert on your child, the person who knows your child best, to engage in ongoing monitoring of your child to see if your child is making good progress developmentally. Developmental monitoring is different than what we call developmental screening. Developmental screening is a more formal process using standardized developmental screening tool that is scored by an expert. The tool is designed to offer a more precise measurement of a child's development so we may screen for potential developmental delays. Developmental monitoring and developmental screening are two terms that are often used interchangeably. However, as you can see from this Venn diagram, they are actually somewhat different. Developmental monitoring is an ongoing process that is done by both families and teachers, while screening is more formal and it is completed with professionals using a validated screening tool. Both developmental monitoring and developmental screening are designed to track signs of development to make sure that children are meeting their developmental milestones. There are five main areas of development that we think about to understand if a child is growing and developing as we expect them to for their age. Cognitive skills are how a child thinks and solves problems and how they play. Examples include exploring objects with their senses to learn about them, like banging objects together or building with blocks. Communication skills are how a child understands and speaks with language, including words or signs. There are two parts to communication, receptive and expressive communication. Receptive communication is a child's understanding of others' speech and communication. For example, understanding simple commands. Expressive communication is a child's ability to communicate with words or signs. Motor skills are how a child moves his or her body. Gross motor skills are big movement skills like rolling over, walking, and running. Fine motor skills are little movement skills like holding a pencil, picking up a Cheerio, or other small items. Personal, social, or adaptive skills are self-help skills that a child learns that help them to take part in day-to-day -day activities. This may include feeding oneself with a spoon, tying shoes, and dressing self. Social-emotional skills are how a child interacts with others and their environment in a social way including nonverbal communication, like using eye contact to make requests, pointing to make a request, playing with peers, and seeking out adults for comfort or to play. When we complete a screening tool, it also assesses these five areas of development. We are going to be discussing these areas throughout the presentation, and we'll be engaging in a game to guess at what age we might expect some tasks for each of these areas. First, we will start our game with cognitive problem-solving skills. Remember, these skills have to do with how a child thinks and solves problems and how they play. Around what age do you expect a child to be able to hold a crayon and scribble by him or herself? We like to play this game 
because we might be surprised by some of the answers. This is meant to be fun, so there's no pressure. Our options are six months, 18 months, and 36 months. The answer is 18 months. And you can see this little 18 month old boy scribbling on the floor. Now that we've introduced developmental monitoring and the areas that we monitor, we will talk about why it is so important. Developmental monitoring and conducting regular developmental screenings help us to identify and understand when a child may have a delay in one or more of the areas of development that we just talked about. This is the first step in determining if a child may need services to help support them with those areas of need. A delay in a skill area means that a child is having difficulty in that area as compared to what is expected for his or her age. The reason that it is important to monitor development and complete regular developmental screenings in the earliest months and years of a child's life has a large part to do with brain development. Brain development starts when a child is a fetus in the mother's womb. When a baby is born full term, the size of their brain is about one third the size of an adult brain. Following birth, the brain grows significantly in the first years of life. By age five, it is about 90% of the size of an adult brain. Therefore, it is important to get children supports and services as early as possible when their brain is still developing. As we mentioned, the sooner the better for receiving extra support in the areas of need to support long-term growth and development. Those extra supports, called early intervention services, are often helpful for supporting children's growth and development. Specifically, some research shows that families report good effects from early intervention as the children age out of early intervention services at age three and enter the school system. Some reports suggest that given the better outcomes in the school system, there may be positive long-term impacts on later adult employment and engagement in society. So who should be monitored? We are sharing all this information with you as parents because we know that all children will benefit from developmental monitoring. At the same time, it is important to know that most children, about 85%, are on track for development. There are, however, some groups of children who are at risk for having a delay in one or more areas of development. This includes children born with some genetic or developmental disorders, children who have spent time in the NICU due to premature birth, or medical complexity, or children who've experienced extreme adverse life events. Extreme life events include many experiences such as being abused, exposed to violence, instability in the home, or being neglected and not having proper nutrition, just to name a few. Because all these children are at risk, it is especially important to monitor their development. Being at risk means that some children may be more likely to have delays based on these factors, but it does not mean that all children who have one of these factors will have a delay. We just want to pay extra attention to children who have had these experiences. At the same time, because a parent can never know for sure if a child will have a delay, it is important to monitor to keep track for all children. As a parent, you monitor your child's development every day that you play and care for your child. You may be asking, why do I need to complete developmental screenings too? The simplest and truest answer is that you are the expert on your child. You spend every day with them through the good and the bad. You have a sense of small changes in their development day to day and week to week. You attend their appointments and can advocate to providers. While providers may have expertise in child development, each child is unique, and parents are the ones who know, through observation and instinct, when there are concerns. Before moving on to the next section, let's jump back to our game, focusing on communication skills. We had said that communication skills are how a child understands and speaks with language, including words or signs. Around what age do you expect a child to say simple words like mama or dada? Our options are 12, 18, and 24 months. The answer is 12 months. Mama, mama. Mama, mama. 
Now that we've talked about why developmental monitoring and screening are so important, we want to talk about how to actually engage in the developmental screening process as a parent. There are many screening tools and checklists to support parents in monitoring their child's development. We will be talking about one very helpful tool called the Ages and Stages Questionnaire, which is a tool we use in the state of Delaware. The Ages and Stages Questionnaire, or ASQ, is a tool that supports parents in determining which tasks their child is expected to be able to do based on their age. The ASQ can be accessed online and, after filling out a few questions about your child, it will provide you with appropriate questions across several areas of development that we talked about based on your child's age. The Ages and Stages Questionnaire Social Emotional, or ASQSE, is a similar tool that focuses on another area of development, social communication skills. It is recommended that parents complete the ASQ with their child once per year from birth to age five. Today, we are going to walk you through how to access and use the ASQ to monitor your child's development. There are many locations where the ASQ can be accessed online. Child care centers often provide parents with information about how to access the ASQ. You can also go to the ASQ by going to the Office of Early Learning's website, which we will share at the end of this presentation. We will be providing examples of what completing the ASQ looks like, but first we want to explain several of the initial steps you will complete before entering information about your child's growth and development. First, you must choose which questionnaires you want to complete. We recommend completing both to look at all areas of development. Next, you will be asked to provide your consent or permission to screen, meaning that you agree that the information that you complete will be shared with several organizations in the state of Delaware and your child's child care provider, all aimed at supporting your child's development. Next, you will see directions for how to complete the ASQ. Finally, you will be asked to complete some basic demographic information about your child. When it asks for the name of your child's child care center, make sure to provide the very specific name of the center to eliminate confusion. We are now going to walk through a few examples of what the questions on the ASQ look like. First, I will draw your attention to the tabs at the top of the page. You can see the developmental areas that we discussed before. These include communication, gross motor, fine motor, problem solving, personal social, and overall. Here, motor skills are broken down into two separate tabs for the two motor skill types that we discussed, fine and gross motor. You will see that social emotional questions are not here as they are with the other questionnaire, the ASQSE. That questionnaire is very similar to this one. The first example is a question in the communication area for a 30 month old child. If you point to a picture of a ball, kitty cup, hat, etc., and ask your child, what is this? Does your child correctly name at least one picture? The options for all the questions in the ASQ are yes, sometimes, or not yet. Choose the best answer. It is ideal if you try doing the activity with your child first to best know how to answer, while also thinking back to what you have noticed your child doing recently. Here is another example for a six-month-old looking at gross motor area. When your baby is on his tummy, does he hold his head up so that his chin is about three inches from the floor for at least 15 seconds? Remember to try out the activity with your child before answering. For this one, you would place your child on his or her tummy and see if he or she holds his head or her head three inches from the floor for at least 15 seconds. If he or she has been doing that regularly, you would answer yes. If it is a new skill, you would answer sometimes. And if he or she is not able to do that skill quite yet, you would answer not yet. 
This is an example of a problem-solving cognitive area for a five-year-old. When asked, which circle is smallest, does your child point to the smallest circle? Ask this question without providing help by pointing, gesturing, or looking at the smallest circle. Note that there are additional instructions in italics to help explain the questions. You will notice that some questions have these additional explanations. In this case, it notes that you should not provide extra help to your child. At the end of the questionnaire, there is a section that looks like this that allows you to enter additional information, including some yes, no questions with space to type in additional information if you answer yes. This is where you can include any additional concerns that you may have. Do you have concerns about your child's vision? If yes, explain. For example, for this question, if I am concerned that my child is not seeing well, I would answer yes and provide details in the box. For example, my child is squinting frequently. Finally, once you have submitted your answers, a box will pop up that looks like this or looks very similar to this, asking if you are sure that you are ready to submit the questions. You will have to click OK to be able to submit the questionnaire and then work on the next developmental monitoring tool, the ASQSE. We know that life is very busy and it can be hard to go through these questions. We have some recommendations for how to help set up the environment to make it easier for you as parents. You will get a reminder from your child's teacher to complete the ASQ once a year. We recommend setting a reminder in your phone to complete the form. If you prefer, you could write a note and place it somewhere, but we find that phone reminders are most effective. It can also be helpful to set aside specific time to go through the activities with your child. Additionally, if there is an activity that your child has not yet been exposed to, like cutting with scissors, you can expose your child to the activity and go back to the ASQ later to complete it. When completing the ASQ, you can make it fun and involve other family members to observe or help answer the questions. Before moving on to the next section, let's jump back to our game about the areas of development. We are on motor skills. Remember, we said that motor skills are how a child moves his or her body. Gross motor skills are big movement skills and fine motor skills are little movement skills. Around what age do you expect a child to begin sitting without support? Our options are three months, six months, or nine months. The answer is six months. And we can see here this little six month old girl beginning to sit without support on the floor. Let's move on to the next section. What happens next? After you have completed and submitted the results for your child ASQ, they are sent to the appropriate individuals in the state of Delaware who will score the results. You will then be sent a letter in the mail or an email describing the results and appropriate recommendations. In some cases, your child's child care provider will communicate with you in greater detail about the results. In terms of the results of the ASQ, there are three possible outcomes. The results will show which of these categories your child's development falls into and which indicates the next steps. First, we will talk about on-target results. As we mentioned earlier, most children, about 85%, or 85 out of every 100 children, are on target for development or even above average. If your child falls into this category across all areas of development, recommendations will be shared with you in the letter that you are receiving outlining activities and ideas for how to continue to support your child's development. Next, we will talk about monitoring. Some children fall into what we call the monitoring range, which means that their skill development is below what we would expect for their age in one or more areas of development, but that they are not missing skills to a degree that would likely qualify them for a referral for additional evaluation. All children develop at different paces, and they may plateau in one area while developing in another. These children make up about 10% of children, or 10 out of every 100 children, fall into this category. 
If your child falls into the monitoring category, it is important to reassess them sooner than the annual screening. We recommend reassessing in four to six months. If their skills continue to be a concern, we recommend a referral for a more formal evaluation. We also recommend focusing on working on activities to support your child as much as possible in growing those skill areas where they may have more difficulties in order to close the gap in development. Recommendations for these activities are sent home in the letter with your results. Finally, we will talk about referral results. About 5% of children, or 5 out of every 100 children, will fall into the result category we call referral, which means that their developmental skills in one or more areas seem to be significantly below what we would expect for their age, and that they may benefit from extra support in those particular areas and should be further evaluated. What you see here shows the process for referrals. First, these children and their families are identified based on the results of the ASQ. You will receive a letter or email stating the concern, and it will also contain the contact information for the appropriate referral based on your child's age. For children birth through 35 months or just before age three, it is Child Development Watch. For children 36 months and older, it is your family's appropriate school district. If you accept the referral and the appropriate organization, Child Development Watch or the school district, will then conduct a formal evaluation to determine if your child would benefit from early intervention services, and if so, for which areas of development. All steps of this process are voluntary. We are going to go into more detail about these two pathways or organizations based on your child's age to explain a bit more about what to expect should your child need a referral. Additionally, it is important to know that regardless of the results of the ASQ, if you have a concern for your child's development, you are welcome to contact the appropriate organization based on your child's age to determine if they would qualify for services. The ASQ is a screening tool for helping to monitor development, but its use is not intended to prevent families from seeking a referral if they believe that their child has a delay in any area of development. You can self-refer to these organizations, and sometimes your child's pediatrician may refer to these organizations if they have a concern for your child's development. First, we will touch briefly on Child Development Watch. Child Development Watch, or CDW, is the State of Delaware's Early Intervention Program as part of Part C of the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, or IDEA. It provides services for children from birth through age 35 months or up until their third birthday at minimal to no cost to families. Once a referral is placed, CDW will contact you to discuss and schedule an initial evaluation an evaluation will only be scheduled with your consent. During the evaluation, a professional will conduct a formal developmental assessment with the child to determine whether they have a developmental delay in one or more of the five areas of development and are eligible to receive special education services. If eligible, CDW will create what is known as a Individualized Family Service Plan. This plan is created with you and providers and includes goals, services, and therapies tailored to meet the needs of your child. You must first provide consent for this plan to be implemented. As part of your child's Individualized Family Service Plan, or IFSP, early intervention services are provided in your child's natural environment, such as their home or childcare setting. Child and family outcomes are developed based on your child's individual and unique needs. Services will be based on the individual outcomes in the IFSP and the decision of the team as to how to best help you and your child meet these outcomes. These services may include special instruction to meet outcomes that cross one or more developmental domains and may also include physical therapy, occupational therapy, or speech and language therapy. This is not an exhaustive list 
And also keep in mind that every family and child is assigned to a family service coordinator to support them in accessing their early intervention program, including parental rights and safeguards under IDEA. This is just a general overview of possible services if a child is found eligible. Next, we will briefly touch on the school district. If results of the ASQ indicate a potential delay in one or more areas of development for your child and your child is 36 months or older, you will be provided with the contact information to request a formal evaluation with the appropriate school district to determine if your child would be eligible for services. Your school district provides services for children 36 months and older in their school, childcare, or home setting at no cost to families. If your child is eligible for services, you and a team will develop an Individualized Education Plan, or IEP, for your child that would include early childhood special education services that are tailored to meet the needs of your child. Your consent is required to provide services. Of note, if your child qualifies for services before age three through CDW, they will also go through this process just prior to age three in order to determine if they are eligible to receive services through the school district. Now, jumping back to our game, we are on personal social adaptive skills. Remember, personal social or adaptive skills are skills that a child learns to help them take part in day-to-day -day activities. Around what age do you expect a child to dress and undress themselves? Our options are 12 months, 24 months, or 36 months. The answer is 36 months or three years old. And here you can see a young boy putting on his shirt and putting on his shoes. Our final section is to provide you with many additional resources to continue to support your child's development. Your child's early years are so very important. Tracking how your little one plays, learns, speaks, acts, and moves helps you to support their development. CDC's free Milestone Tracker app has a new look and new features. This app offers fun and easy activities for each age, interactive milestone checklists and custom user profiles, photos and videos that illustrate milestones from ages two months through five years, appointment reminders, and much more to help your child grow and thrive. You can learn more about the Milestone Tracker app and get a sneak peek by visiting cdc.gov backslash milestone tracker. Delaware Thrives also has many free resources for families who have young children. You can visit Delaware Thrives by going to dethrives.com. Finally, we have also developed this resource guide for you, which you can access with the posted training materials. It includes Delaware specific resources and agencies who can help support you and your family. Our final area for the game is social emotional skills. Remember, social emotional skills are how a child interacts with others in a social way, including nonverbal social communication, like using eye contact to make requests, pointing to requests, playing with peers, and seeking out adults for comfort or to play. Around what age do you expect a child to tell what is real and make believe? Our options are 24 months, 36 months, and 60 months. And the answer is 60 months or five years old. Three pretend things. Ninja Turtles. Princesses. And unicorns. We want to close with some important points to remember from the large amount of information that we shared with you today. Remember that you are the expert on your child's development and that there are screening tools such as the ASQ that can support you in monitoring your child's development. Additionally, there are many resources here in Delaware that can support you and your child in their growth and development. Thank you.